The right flow rate is a major step in getting good looking and dimensionally accurate 3D prints. Using the wrong flow rate can lead to both over and under extrusion, which are two of the main issues resulting in bad looking prints. Before I work on dialing in my flow rate, I want to make sure I've calibrated my E steps and dialed in my temperature. E steps determine how much filament is passing through the extruder, your flow rate determines how much filament is coming out of the hot end. If you haven't dialed in your temperature yet, it's an easy process. I have a video on how to print a temperature tower in Creality Print. I'll post a link to that video in the description. It's definitely worth doing. Now, I'll be doing a simple flow test, checking the results, do a little bit of math, and update my profile for this PLA filament from Printed Solid for use in Creality Print. All right, enough of the chit chat. Let's get to work. I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. The first thing I need to do is make sure I'm on the right printer. So I'm working on my Ender 3 V3 SE. So we're going to check that. And I want to make sure I'm set to my right filament, the one I'm trying dialing in, which is printed solid. I'm going to go to manage real quick while I'm here. And I'm going to look at my current flow rate. And we can see right here, it's 100%. So now we know where we stand. Let's get started. What we do is we come up, we click on calibration. And what we're going to do is click on pass one. Now, pass one is more of a coarse pass. Like it's, it's not for fine detail. We'll, we'll do the fine tuning in a bit. This kicks us right over to our preview. And you'll notice we have nine patterns here. Each one of them is numbered. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to print this. And we're going to look at our results on the other side. Both minus five and zero look pretty good to me. But when I'm rubbing my finger along the edges where the walls meet the top surface, these edges right here, um, it feels a bit rough like sandpaper on zero, but minus five feels really smooth. So I think I'm going to go with minus five. Now on some of these others, like we got five, 10, 15, and 20, they're all way over extruded. They're, they're out right together. And when I come over to minus 10, minus 15, minus 20, like you can see some gaps in here, a little bit in this area. Uh, under extruding a little bit so minus five is my choice for pass one okay so we're going to do our pa our second pass and what i'm going to do is just go back to the prepare menu I'm going to click on calibration flow rate and then i'm going to click pass two we get a dialog box asking us which one we chose from pass one I chose negative five. So I'm going to click on that and OK. And that's going to set everything up for pass two. Now you notice right away that our numbers are different. Like on pass one, we had a negative 10 up here. We're, we're really getting into the nitty gritty of things. But we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to print this out. We're going to look at which one gives the best result. We're going to do a little bit of math and we'll update our profile. All right, so I have my results here from uh, the fine tune pass, pass two, and I'm really liking minus one and zero. I could probably get away with using either one, but it's coming down to feel, actually. Minus one actually feels smoother. It does look a little bit smoother. Uh, when I get up here to negative two, right around the edges, there's some sharp bumps. When I get over here, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8, it's starting to get to the point where it feels like sandpaper again, uh, right where the top surface meets the outer walls. So as far as smoothness and look and feel, minus 1 is my choice. Let's jump back into Creality Print, do a little bit of math, and update our profile. All right, time to do a little bit of math now that we have all of our results. Creality does their flow rate a little different than a lot of the other slicers. What we do is we take our result from pass one 
and our result from past 2, and we add them together, which is going to be negative 5 plus negative 1, which is negative 6. And we're going to add that to our current flow rate, which is 100. So 100 plus negative 6 is 94. So let's go back to our prepare menu. I'm going to go back to manage. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to change 100% to 94%. Now I'm going to be honest. I'm not real comfortable at 94%. I've never had one off by 6% before. My prints were already looking good. 6% seems excessive. I'm going to do a little bit of testing. I'm going to do a print at 100% and one at 94% and we'll compare the two results. So I'm going to save this for now and run the 94% and what I'm going to use for my test is this simple extrusion test part I found on printables. It's made by CNC Kitchen. He does a lot of good testing for 3D printing. Uh, the details on how to set this piece up are down here in the description. Like I said, I'm going to run it twice, once at 94%, then I'm going to come back and run it at 100%, and we'll compare. I have both of my test prints, and I have to admit, I'm blown away by what I'm seeing. The one on the right was printed at a flow rate of 100%. The one on the left was printed with my new calculated flow rate of 94%. You can see the difference. And... The, te the test print at 94% is smooth, while the part printed at the original flow rate of 100% is rough, and it feels like sandpaper. Now, I thought the Ender 3 V3 SE was doing great with the stock settings. I'm really looking forward to seeing how well it does with the updated. Now, I'll be sticking with the 94% flow rate for this material on the Ender 3 V3 SE. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, hit the like button, let me know in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be notified of new content in the future. I'm going to continue to dial in this profile. Live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.